This time, the sense of dread turned out to be nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing well, happens. Well, this thing. I couldn't like I say, all the, ac- the all the yes, actors. I disagree were- on that one too. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What? You disagree with me? How dare you? I mean, <laughs> all right, the show's over. <laughs> I can't stand it when I people can't disagree work with like me. This. <laughs> Tell me when. Well, we can go now. Yeah, we've been recording oh, this whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm always stepping on your boop boop boop. (laughs) Okay, hello, hello. Welcome to our 60th episode of What the Flicks podcast. My name is Susan Ayers. Patty Smith. Lon Shima. Jorge Sanchez. Bob Nick Shields. Okay, so the movie. I don't know where to look. (laughs) I feel like Steve Martin. Can I get the... uh, (laughs) It's so low the table. Put a little face on it. <laughs> Needle iPad. Yeah, yeah. You know, fork Can with I go to the bathroom? The fork with the cork. <laughs> <laughs> then you make that funny face. I swear. Okay. So what are we doing? <laughs> so the movies we're discussing today are. Oh, I have to just tell you, they were all very good. Was it? I just you got to watch all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Argentina, 1985, Triangle of Sadness, Maverick. And prisoners. So I think we start with you, Lon. Oh, okay. Yes. I am the one who picked the Banshees, the Banshees of Isher, uh, it written and directed by Martin McDonough. Column Sonny Larry. Didn't you? He used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. When you didn't do anything to me, I just don't like you no more. You didn't like me yesterday. Why does he not want to be friends with you no more? Why is he 12? What the hell's going on with you, me feckin' brother? He's dull, Siobhan. But he's always been dull. The other night, two hours, you spent talking to me about the things you found in your little donkey shite that day. Well, it wasn't me little donkey shite, it was me pony shite, which shows how much you were listening. If you don't stop talking to me, Colin. and if you don't stop bothering me, I have a set of shears at home, and each time you bother me from this day on, I'll take those shears, and I'll take one of my fingers off with them, and I'll give that finger to you until I have no fingers left. Does this make things clearer to you? Not really, no. Starting from now. But shush like, Polly. You know, shush like. Yeah, I'd shush like. Would you not want him to have to do the one finger to see if he was bluffing like? No, we wouldn't. Because worse goes to worse, he can still play the fiddle with four fingers, I bet ya. Going back to your own gang now, Parry. I'm talking to me! Are ya? Why aren't you talking to Parry no more? That wouldn't be a sin now, would it, Father? No, but it's not very nice either, is it? Do you know who we remember for how nice they was in the 17th century? Who? Absolutely no one. Yet yeah, we all remember the music at the time. Everyone to a man knows Mozart's name. I don't, so there goes that theory. Can't be waiting around for any more of this madness. Let's just call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. The old donkey. Yes. <laughs> Jenny, oh, the Jenny the donkey. <laughs> yes. Jenny. Well, hopefully by the trailer you see because what you get in the trailer is exactly what you get in the movie. The mm-hmm. only thing I think that's missing is just really how psychologically dark this actually does get, in my opinion. Yeah. Because the drama. At first, you just think, "Oh, how funny!" Uh, for some reason, it's never explained. Uh, Brendan Gleeson just goes off and his best friend. Played by Colin Farrell. Uh, he, Colin Farrell's Paul Rick. Uh, ooh, geez, I forgot Brendan Gleeson's character's name. Uh, Colm. Colm. And then um, <clears throat> he, they're at the pub every day. Just one day he's not there. Brendan Gleeson, as you see in the trailer, just decides to call off their friendship. And poor uh, uh, Podrick cannot seem to let go, which is uh, understandable in my opinion. Absolutely. When you're close with somebody for so many years and somebody says, I just don't want to be friends with you anymore, it's like, it's like, why? Explain it to me. But not just, oh, 
you know, like you said, because you're boring or this or that. You want to full out what have I, because Colin Farrell really thinks he's done something to offend his friend. And you watch basically two souls not e- not only torture themselves, but they begin to torture others. And that's what I thought was fascinating because this really spirals into a whole another scene, which, you know, at first I'm watching this and there's something in the background that's showed, but not really dealt with. But I think this is what the movie reflects. And that's the Irish Civil War. Mm-hmm. Because... They're on an island. I think one of them was, uh, they filmed in one called Iran, because uh, Inishirin apparently is not an, a real island. And they can hear explosions going off. And they just say, oh, it's the uh, war. people you know, starting troubles or this and that again. And at one point, an, uh, one of the police officer who plays the father of uh, one of the main characters um, is going to go over there to oversee an execution mm. there as well. And he doesn't even care. He says... And I don't know who's being executed, but to him it didn't matter. He just always wanted to go to an execution. <laughs> That's the kind of humor this thing has because these people, uh, they, okay, besides the two main characters, there are two other, I think, very, very important characters. One is uh, Siobhan, who is uh, pa- Podrick's uh, sister. Uh, she's sort of a no-nonsense person. In fact, in my opinion, she literally seems to be the only sane person on the <laughs> island. She actually just seems normal. All the rest seem a little off to me. And I mean everyone. Absolutely everyone. I don't think there's one single person that said, oh, that seems like a normal person. Maybe an exception of the bartender slash pub owner. Okay. But he's not really in it that much. But she really points out how when you live on a small island, and I guess it's the same as small town, everyone knows your business. Sure. So this little feud that they're having, everyone on the island knows about it. And they're sort of perplexed as well. And even try to uh, help, you know, try to, <laughs> this right. little thing. I, I Again, you probably saw the priest. Again, very important <laughs> to the island is uh, religion, which I'm assuming they're Catholics. Um, Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. They're I'm just assuming. Irish. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they really well, got Northern Irish, Irish down. Mm-hmm. Huh? They're not Northern Irish. I didn't say that. I just said yes, Irish. So there's there's Irish, a definite Catholic, Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, that's what I think. Yeah, that because well, what I've seen, and that's why I was sort of sort of drawn to this movie because at first I thought, what in the world? You know, I thought, what kind of world did I just step into? And then it's like as things unfold, because to be quite honest, what you saw in the trailer, there's just all of that throughout it. I don't think there's anything really deepful or meaning, with the exception of what this is maybe an allegory for. But I was just fascinated by these characters. Uh, the other character was played by um, Ben uh, Keoghan. He plays the son Barry. of the... Uh, oh, excuse me, Barry. Yeah. I'm trying to... I lost my Wikipedia page. Oh, there we go. Because I was trying to think what his name was. Um, he plays the son of the uh, the policeman or the Garda, I guess in Ireland it's called, uh, Dominic. He, you could tell, has... is. <laughs> off <laughs> yeah he obviously is not the brightest one in fact at one point you know colin farrell asked his sister you know do you think i'm the you know the dullest or the stupidest person I and she goes no and she says dominic <laughs> so it's but the thing is there's something very sort of engaging i think with him because oh, yeah. he you could tell he's like a little puppy he oh, yes. he just wants to be liked and wants to converse with anyone. And so he becomes sort of a substitute friend for the Padre pot, character. But he also has such a tragic backstory, yet oh, yeah. his character is is played for laughs. And I think, but not, I don't think inappropriately. You're not laughing because he's stupid. You're just laughing because he's pointing out certain things that, in my sense, make common sense. Yeah. But the simplicity of his uh, character is almost tragic because another thing they do sort of mention is how there are very little women on these these islands. So you got to figure, yeah, unless you go to the mainland, you yeah. probably won't find a, a life or a wife if that's what you want to, you know, which I'm assuming with as a Catholic. With that and being a Catholic, right, that, that's sort of an important thing, right? So, and Irish, I think, too, if I'm not mistaken. They're very family-oriented. So it was it was a very odd 
film. I can say that, but I really enjoyed In Bruges, which I, I wasn't was even great movie. familiar that the same director and the same two stars in it who worked exactly the same way. Dark humor, I thought it was funny, but very serious and dramatic because they're playing two assassins in In Bruges. Here, the simplicity of their characters and yet how like, I don't want to say grotesque, but how uncomfortable I began. <laughs> they began to feel when I started watching these two characters and wine and get to the point of, uh, basically the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Again, and that's why I thought, you know, maybe that's why he's making these comments about the Irish Civil War, is that this is what it sort of represents when you have two sides who basically are the same, yet I don't want to be around you. And I'll go to any extreme lengths to keep you away from me. So, and that's all I can say. But I, I thought the performances are really well done. I, yeah. I, the four characters I mentioned, the actors I mentioned, I thought they were excellent. Uh, there's another odd character, Mrs. McCormick, who's like the, the little old lady who I don't know if she's supposed to be the witch or whatever <laughs> there, but she makes observations and comments that, and everyone seems to fear her because they're always polite to her, but they don't want to be around her. <laughs> she's so negative. But there's always, in those small towns, there's always that negative old lady. <laughs> but also yeah. people feel like... Uh, in small towns like that too, that they generally think mm -hmm. like somebody that would be a witch. Yeah. And yeah. generally believe well, it Remember too. the time, 1923. Yeah, right. exactly. exactly. Yeah, and even and on top Irish of are mm -hmm. very superstitious. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have uh, that fae and that. And they have a, a long seated pagan ritual yes. yeah. that they belong to. But I will point out that, yeah, cinematography by Ben Davis. Again, it's just a beautiful, beautiful Irish location. So it's it's yeah. hard not to make it look good. And and Carter Bur Burwell did the music, which I thought really matched it. So yes. I would great. highly recommend this movie, but not for the faint of heart. <laughs> George? Yeah, I really enjoyed the movie too. Uh, it was really, actually, it's very dark humor. It was cracking me up the whole time. Yeah. I thought, you know, I think it's supposed, the time's supposed to be either 1929 or 1926. 1923. 23, there yeah. you go. So the, uh, the, the, the Civil War. I thought the movie might have been trying to make some kind of allegory with the war, with their lives, but if whatever it was, I missed it. I'm not smart enough to catch that. But I did, what I didn't miss was the the the, uh, the guy that they act, who wants to cut his, the friendship, Calm. the balenist. Right. He, Calm. he feels that he hasn't made a mark in the world and that, you know, he's a violinist. So, and he starts, he starts talking about, uh, I think Mozart or, or, or certain <laughs> musicians. He goes, nobody remembers this person, but everybody knows who Mozart is. So he goes, I haven't, I'm about, I'm getting older in life, you know, basically, and I'm, on, I'm not leaving a mark in the world. He's a musician. So, and he feels now that Colin's character is keeping him from do, making a mark in, <laughs> in the world, you know, writing the next great hits song that everybody will remember. Because Colin's character is just, he's the opposite. He's just simple. I like my life. I like, I like doing what I do. I don't, I don't have this great vision of, you know, Ruling the right. role of being mm -hmm. a an right. influencer, <laughs> so <laughs> so he's, yeah. he really loves a simple life. Now, unfortunately for him, his sister also feels the same way that she she needs she needs to move on. She, she she's too smart for these people. I'm too smart for you guys, basically. So she'll mm -hmm. make the, the, she'll make references sometimes that he doesn't know what she's talking about. Because uh, so, but kind of like you know, read a book. <laughs> so <laughs> so I think that and it's funny that the uh, violinist character he starts he cuts off his friendship because he feels that he's not, am I giving away the, the plot? <laughs> when he wants to make a mark, but <clears throat> and then, uh, but you know, I think it makes a point that sometimes it's okay to just be simple life too. You know, he was happy. Nobody's bothering him. He you know likes his his uh, farm animals, his donkey. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to be uh, make a great impact in life. You know, sometimes it's just. That's his great impact Be in life. Be nice. Yeah, that's his great impact well, in that's, life. You know? that's, that's actually his, his main character that's is that game. he just seems to be a, yeah. actually a, nice a very man. nice yeah. person. And I, thought that, you know, yeah. and I thought this probably, I haven't seen the the, uh, the Lobster movie, but to me this is probably the best role I've seen Colin uh, Farrell mm -hmm. yeah. you know, It really suited him. He just, you know, he was perfect for it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I enjoyed it. Bob. Did you well, watch all movie, Bob? <laughs> I can't fault the actors for anything other than choosing to be in this movie. Um, <laughs> to me, it's like... You know, the uh, the actors are all wonderful. It occurs to me, you know, I, I had kind of missed the, I think I was starting to fall asleep at the credits. And I, I think I, I missed the part that it was a period piece. So if it's 1923, when were the, when did the troubles, the separation between 
Northern Ireland and well, Southern Ireland. 1960, but right? I think it's yeah. been going 70. on a long so time. No, 1960, 1970. So Brendan, Brendan, uh, Brendan Gleeson has orange hair. And the mm-hmm. and uh, Ian, uh, uh, what's his face? Well, it's supposed uh, to be reddish to be. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's mm-hmm. too much orange, orange hair. Too much contrast on the TV. So he's Northern <laughs> Ireland, and Colin Farrell is our, is uh, Southern. Well, you Ireland. know, that's the Vikings, the mm-hmm. red hair part. <laughs> that's a sure. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. What are you saying? Irish people don't have red hair? No, I'm saying that this is a it's a meta. It's a, I never thought of it, but it's a metaphor mm. between uh, the the Fighting? north and south. Yes, the north mm. and south I, I, of I agree. Mm. And and the, he is representing the north because he's got orange hair. <laughs> interesting. But that but the thing is, like, interesting. My subtitle for this movie was "Waiting for the Other Godot to Drop." Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> waiting for this Godot. is like, this gets. This is about like people waiting for something. We, it's about the audience waiting for something to happen that never happens. Never happens. No. And uh, and it's is uh, Martin McDonough's movies. Uh, I I admire them. I don't really like them, but I admire them. I want to also point out another movie he did, which I thought was terrific, was Seven Psychopaths. But he that was him. I'm a, yeah. That's a good movie. That's a his, great his title. movie. His <laughs> movies to me are movies that uh, that make you laugh. But you have a sense of dread because you know something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. This time, the sense of dread turned out to be nothing happens. <laughs> nothing well, happens in this well, thing. I couldn't like I say, all the, ac- the all the yes, I disagree were- on that one too. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. What you disagree with me? How dare you? I mean, <laughs> all right, the show's over. <laughs> I can't stand it when I people can't disagree work with me. Like <laughs> I refuse to work with these in this environment. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know it, it's uh, it's not that it's a bad movie it's just to me it was a boring movie it was it went as a really long movie it's like about two and a half hours or something of this yeah. one thing yeah. it's just hey why aren't why aren't you my friend anymore I don't want to be your friend anymore well why aren't you my friend anymore I don't want to be your friend anymore that's it over and over again there's nothing much else that happens in there the sister was great the the Barry Keoghan was great. Uh, actually, uh, Brendan Gleeson and and Ian. Uh, why do I keep saying Ian? Colin Farrell were both great. Everybody in it was terrific. But why make this movie? It didn't. It, it took. And what? Did, where were the Banshees? Yeah, yeah. The Banshees crazy. come screaming at you know at death. You know they come screaming in. You're and the Banshees solo. watching the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but where, where was? Where were the Banshees? And why was it called the Banshees? <laughs> well, you know why? I that, think that was the song he wrote. Mm-hmm. But I think also. Oh yeah, but that okay. I believe was the name oh. of the song. Ah. Okay, so yeah. what does it have to do with the plot? But, you know, the but also the banshees scream, and he's not talking to him; he's mute. So there's something about their banshees, so but they're not talking. He's screaming. Oh, the movie's called The Screamers, <laughs> and it's about people who are not talking. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of stuff in this that I didn't get, but what I did see, it just was like same thing with In Bruges. I, everybody told me how great it was and how funny it was. I went to see it and I said, okay, this isn't. A, I wouldn't call it funny, but what's going to happen. And I don't think I'm going to like what's going to happen. And I didn't. And this is like sort of the same thing, except nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. I mean, there's no difference between, as I, as I can recall, no difference between the relationship in the beginning and the end of the movie. Because before we even meet the character, he's decided, I don't want to be your friend anymore. We don't know why. So it gets into Samuel Beckett ter- territory, hence waiting for the other Godot to drop. Okay. Um, you know, I don't generally like Colin Farrell, but I loved him in this movie. I loved his character. I totally bought into it. I totally loved him. Me too. I loved everybody in this movie. And I disagree that nothing happened in this movie. Tons of stuff happened in this movie. But it was one of the reasons I also didn't want to watch it, Colin Farrell, be Irish. Okay, it's going to be depressing. That's (laughs) what I thought. (laughs) That's what I thought. It's going to be like tragic. Okay, but I didn't know it was 1923, the, the, the thing. Well, so uh, uh, Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell, they have so much chemistry, you know, that it makes it work. You really believe that 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 Patrick, I, am I saying his name right? Patrick? Patrick. I, I'm almost Patrick. going to that je- donkey. Pat- Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> well, they just pronounced it in the movie. They were saying pork. Okay. That's why it was weird. Okay, we'll, weird. we'll go yeah. with that pork. Pork, pork, pork. Right? Pork. It's like they when the chemistry between the two main characters work, it's it works. You believe everything else. And I I I can't even tell you how beautiful the and depressing. How beautiful and depressing 
the scenery was. It was like on the ocean, which should be like great for me. And it's like, but it's so overcast and dark all the time. Um, it really gives you a sense of isolation. That's why it's the Emerald Isle, That's because right. it's so damn there yeah. all the time. Anyways, they had so much chemistry that made the movie real for me. So Irish. Uh, <laughs> for the life of me, I cannot figure out what this film was about. <laughs> But I, I can't. It's it's tragic. Is it a tragedy? Is it a comedy? I'm not really sure. It's dark. That's it, what they it, describe it, it as. But it's also it's very funny. It's yeah. also it is very funny. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yes. And I said, there seems to be a civil war going on in the distance. And I'm wondering if there might be a connection between the two things. Because it's always kind of there. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, uh, Pedrick... Pa, how would we decide his Colin name? Farrell. Colin Farrell. <laughs> Porrish. 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 Podrick. Podrick. I'll say Podrick. It sounds closer to me. Podrick is very content with his life. And he seems to be the only one, right? <laughs> yeah. He's like content with his life. So he's bewildered by all this discontentment around him. He's like, he goes to the pub. We know somebody like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we know, know a lot of people no, like no, this. No, I know a specific person <laughs> yeah. like this. Me too. That no matter where they travel in the world, they find a pub. At two o'clock and they go. And, and they go the to pub. the pub, right? <laughs> and and it's kind of like, this is so UK. Yeah. It's like the very. pub, you know, so I really get that. And I really understand his, his discomfort coming from a small town because everybody, it's not like something bad happens and you go somewhere and you can ever escape it. You can't escape it because people are always know everything about you, you know, and that's all people talk about. So why is why is Colm not talking to you, or why are you uh, ready? You know, you cannot get away from it. So I understand his confusion and his humiliation, and I understand him. I he's the only one in the movie I really understand, <laughs> and maybe that very young man. Who, um, oh, he was so sad. you know, because he's he's a true tragic yet he, very funny and, and, character. And this in the is movie. The, yeah. the the this is why this movie is so smart. He is so tragic, and he is so funny. But it's doesn't he makes you not feel bad for his circumstance, That's right? True. Except, except things occur. But because he deals with the circumstance in a more like a, a tough way, like it doesn't let it really affect him. You know, he gets, he's been toughened by it, so he deals with it, his circumstance in a funny way. Well, also, the Irish are really famous for being really stubborn. And we I, are yes. not. And, and oh, I feel yes. like, I feel oh, like, yes. and I feel like Colum did something, and now he's not going to go back on that, no matter what. Even though, to the extent that he's going to do terrible things to himself, just to keep make the point that he wants to make, but he can't make that point in that that place. That's my point. Is he's also like you can't make that point in that place without having caused chaos. So I'm not sure that he doesn't want to. <clears throat> you you can't you can't just do what you want and do things to other people and expect no consequence. Right. You know. You know. I, I don't want to interrupt, but that, that just makes me think of something. It's like that character is like telling a joke. You, you, you think of this joke that's the greatest joke you've ever thought of, and you go and tell it, and nobody laughs. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's like. He's like a guy who's like doing something that seemed to make sense at the time, and now nobody is responding to it other than to say, why are you not talking to him? He's your friend. <laughs> and he has no answer for it. But, right. Yeah. And, but, but it just makes it matter mm -hmm. that people are asking, so he does terrible things to himself, <laughs> but okay. So, so why his friend no longer wanted to speak with him, there really isn't any reason that we can figure it's something going on with him. And I agree with George. He wants to, he feels like, cause there's a big age difference mm -hmm. and the age difference is he's dealing with, I'm coming to the last, the, the last the third of my of life. My life. Yeah. And he's a young man. He's in the prime of his life, like the middle of his life. I'm talking about Colin Farrell's character. Yeah, but I think those guys, I think the actors themselves are not that far apart in age. But in the movie, they appear to oh, be older. I, I, I hadn't thought about that. Right? Just so, Colin Farrell behind the gym more. Because <laughs> I think that's an issue people deal with <laughs> as more. something yeah, they have to come video. to terms with. Right. Let's put it that way. They have to come to terms with, this is it. 
what's going to happen. He wasn't at that point. So I, I don't think he understood that about him. Right. Right. Um, let's see his now. Why is no farm to see? He didn't really know why his sister who loved him dearly and they loved each other dearly. They had the best relationship. He couldn't quite understand why she wanted to go away. But she also had her reasons because also, too, she might have been a woman who wanted a family, who wanted children. Remember, this is 1923, Ireland, life. Catholic. Oh, yeah. There, right? Yeah. It's like there's no opportunity there. She's a school teacher. She's very, very book smart, right? Just so his character, I thought, was a sweet, lovely character. And my heart broke for him. Yeah, my heart broke for him, too. Being Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell. Yeah, yeah, Colin Farrell. Uh, this was an interesting movie. I liked it, but I like Susie. Where I thought it was going to go, because Irish always seem to have this, it, no matter what the movie, there's always this humor in it, like the British and the Scottish. You know, there's this humor that mm. underlines, so you're never, like, hitting the, the bottom. Right. So when I watched the end of the movie, I'm thinking... What the hell was that? <laughs> you know, it's like, there's got to be something more to this. And I always look for symbolism. So I'm looking at, uh, so when um, Colin Farrell keeps nagging him to, uh, what, what's his name? Brendan Colin? Gleeson. Brendan Colin. Gleeson. Yeah. I always think it's Brendan Fraser. That I'm talking about. <laughs> Brendan Gleeson. He tells him, I'm going to cut off my fingers until you stop doing that. And I don't think that gives anything away because that's not the highlight. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's in the, it's in the it's trailer. Setup. Yeah, yeah. It's in the trailer. Yeah. And he does. And of course, what an idiot. He's cutting off the thing that gives He's him. He's a violinist. It, it's like music is his love. So what does he do? He cuts off his fingers so he can't do the thing he loves. And blame call and blame uh, uh, Patrick for it. Yeah, it's it's like I thought that was interesting, and because usually he's giving him the finger, he cuts off everything. <laughs> I always, I thought that was the most interesting the part of the movie. <laughs> that's what you call stubborn. Cut off your nose despite, despite your, your face. face. Yeah, that's real Irish. So, yeah. There's mum coming out. No, <laughs> cut off your fingers despite your fiddling. <laughs> yeah, you're fiddling. And that's what I thought was interesting. I knew the sister had to leave. I really didn't get it about. The war. And tell you the truth, mm. I didn't know it was 1923 until George mentioned it. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when you're on an island, everything Did you notice the it seemed a little old-fashioned, yeah. no cell phones? And no. All. It, you know, if you, go to the, if you go out there... Do you really people, still think a lot of people use horse and buggy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. He is a farmer, so... Okay. You know, yeah, it's really hard to tell because those... <laughs> you could go back to those places now... If Unless really he's Amish. And they, and they <laughs> would still... Have horse mm. and buggy. They'd have cars too, but they stay the way they are. And, yes, you know yeah, because yeah. they're not, you know, exposed to the outside world. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad for Colin Farrell. It's like I just wanted to pop that guy in the face, but also too, I keep looking for anything that's referenced a lot. And nice was referenced a lot, mm. and I thought maybe that's the point of the movie. How we underrate nice, how, how well, good it is. But, but, you know, that's yes, what I thought at yes. first as well. I, yes. exactly I, what I, I agree with you. Yeah. It's nothing happens because in most people's lives, nothing happens. Things happen. Little things happen yeah. all the time. But 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 nothing really you, happens. It's like kind of like I get up in the morning, I make my coffee, I go to this, and maybe <clears throat> I talk to the postman that day and he says something funny, and right. maybe there's something funny in the mail. And then I go to work and then I, you know, people's lives are very much like that. Being nice takes a lot of effort. But but, <laughs> but so much is going on in that. You know what I mean? Like, look yeah. at all the shit that's going on in that, <laughs> right? It's well, like, I don't want to see a movie of that. But no, but I did. <laughs> I do I, like more action than that. But, that, you know, it's interesting that you said that about being nice takes a lot of effort because that's exactly what uh, Mike Lee's movie Happy Go Lucky is about. Is how yes. hard it is to You be mean, a, use this nice. puppy? Happy go lucky, yeah, puppy, yeah. Puppy, yes, yes. We'll do that movie. That's yeah. Well, yes. you, didn't, you didn't like it though. You didn't like her. Happy go lucky. Remember? Oh, it was about the queen when she was younger. No, that girl. No, 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 no. It's not what we reviewed. Was, it was Sally uh, Hawkins. Sally Hawkins. They did Sally Hawkins. Hawkins. I love Sally Hawkins. They did. But yeah, remember, she did the movie yeah. about. Was remember, it was, it was movie. just an ordinary yeah. movie. She yeah. was an ordinary girl, and it was called Happy Go Lucky. And you hated it. She had to it. take driving you lessons. You hated it. Yeah, by the you had to take driving guy. <laughs> that triangle, <laughs> triangle, you know. <laughs> totally gone. Now I have to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, I really like this movie, but when you go into it, 
you think it's going to be go into one way, and so you might get disappointed. I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised because I, I surprised. was too. Because that's interesting because it was yeah. it was exactly what I expected. See, too. like, but oh, fortunately, me. you had warned me. You told me your sort of review, so that's why I said, you know, it's it got nominated for the Academy Award. And I thought, oh, let me watch it. Yeah. And because I was prepping in case we did Oscar shows. So I started watching it, and then I just kept what you said in mind because I thought, okay, yeah, it's starting off very slow, very little dialogue. And yet I would say within 30 minutes, I was intrigued by the psychology of, of the behavior of what, what people are doing. Right. And that's why you said it's existential, and that's why I think it's very true. It's very much like a Mike Lee movie, in my opinion, because his movies, to me, are this very movie's all about humanity. This movie wasn't about humanity. I think this oh, has yeah, a lot was. to do about humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's a certain section of humanity. Exactly. No, it's in a really, a, and sort of a really horrible. In a horrible. simplistic yeah. way. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In, a, yeah. in a, a horrible, horrible, funny well, way. <laughs> I, didn't believe, I didn't believe these characters would do this. I mean, I, I think they existed for the plot. I didn't believe them as, as real full human beings ever. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. And I think that's what the surprise was to me. It's like, yeah. okay, now who would really do that? And logically, right? Yet that was part of the drama. In fact, that's why I do like movies because it's like, no, let's push the drama. Let's see what would happen if somebody did it. In fact, the ending actually I thought was almost a perfect yes. ending because I'll make comments later about the music, as you said, and then where Colin Farrell's character takes it. Wait a minute, comments later. How much longer are we going to go on with this? <laughs> I don't know. We still have to rate it. Okay, let me finish <laughs> this part. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Oh, you want to say the something? The ending is really interesting because, you know, certain things happen. I don't think you can really, like, what, what's the word when you blow the last part Spoilers. of it? Spoilers. Yeah, I don't think it's a spoiler <laughs> because it's too... But I thought it was interesting, and hopefully I'm reading it right. I thought Colin Farrell was ready when he says this is the start, whereas the other guy says this is the end, it's yes. over. Don't. No, exactly. And exactly. I could see that Colin Farrell losing everything he loves has changed him into a different man. It's basically, end. you have taken the niceness out of a nice person and welcome yeah. to the rest of us, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. to the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay, are we ready to... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is to our our Oh, I guess I'll be first, huh? No, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I, I'll give it a nine. Yeah, I'm not going to rate movies because it, it, it's arbitrary to me. Okay, nine. Eight. I give this a six. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll be back. Okay. okay, so we'll be back. Okay. Yeah.